Now, India Canada ties continue to be strained over the killing of Khalistan separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. And in the latest, a Financial Times report this week stated that Washington had issued a diplomatic warning to New Delhi over an assassination attempt on Sikh terrorist Gurpatwant Singh Panu on American soil. On Wednesday night, India's External Affairs Ministry said that the US had shared some inputs pertaining to the nexus between organized criminals, gun runners, terrorists, and others. MEA's spokesperson Mr. Arindam Bakchi has said that India takes such input seriously since it impinges on our own national security interests as well. Notably, the statement made no reference or mention of Pannu, but Pannu has launched a fresh verbal attack video against India. It's titled as Violence Begets Violence. Is India ready to face consequences? So what is the terrorist Referring to, well, the case separatist is threatening January 26th of 2024, India's Republic Day, as D-Day and the iconic Red Fort as Ground Zero. Panu's latest verbal salvo accuses New Delhi of using bullets to stop the Khalistani referendum. What will this mean and what kind of an impact will this have on the... Let's try and delve deeper into the impact of this on the India-Canada relationship and for that let me introduce my guest today Terry Milewski who's a Canadian journalist. Uh, Terry thank you for joining in. Now US and its allies including the Five Eyes intelligence sharing network that groups US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand even the UK are quoting India as a rising military trade and technological counterweight to China. At such a timing what does it speak of this alliance's approach towards the Khalistan issue, going by the way the White House has responded to the Pannu issue. The problem at the moment is that this could develop into a serious blockage. In other words, that uh, the progress that has been made in courting India as an ally and a bulwark against China in the future, that's the whole idea of the, the Biden approach, certainly to China, and that of the other allies in the West. And it's it, it could re come grinding to a, a nasty halt if indeed the West, uh, it, we've now got Canada and the, the US lined up together on this issue of extraterritorial alleged assassinations and plots, uh, it, it could get worse. Because it's hard to see how the other demo Western democracies are going to say, nah, it's OK. They, India, could, you know, we don't mind if India wants to flex its muscle as an emerging world superpower and uh, goes around the world uh, eliminating its en enemies on our territory. No, the Western democracies are, are going to draw the line at that. Uh, and they're going to be polite about it, as the Americans have been in this latest case. You notice that there's a difference between what the Canadians did and what the Americans did. The Canadians directly accused, pointed the finger at India and said, you're guilty. The government of India is behind this murder of Nijar in uh, Surrey, British Columbia on June the 18th. But the Americans didn't do that. The Americans were more subtle uh, and, and more, more polite, I would say, um, perhaps more clever. Uh, by saying, well, um, we'd like you to address this. Uh, it appears there's been a plot against Mr. Panun. And uh, we are at an advanced stage in our investigation, so advanced that we actually have a sealed indictment. And this is important to enough, to, uh, uh, enough to the state, to the United States as a state, that Mr. Biden, President Biden, has brought it up personally with Prime Minister Modi. Now, that means that it's taken very, this is not just some average murder plot. The president doesn't occupy himself with such things, but this time he did. So I think that the Americans are saying to the Indians quite subtly and quite politely, we're not accusing you in public anyway, but uh, this is a problem. You can't throw your weight around like this. We're perfectly happy for you to become an ally and a superpower in the future, but not if you behave like this on our soil. So... What are the Indians to do? Also, Terry, Panu is a designated terrorist. Plus, most shockingly, his threatened Sikhs not to travel on November 19. Do you see the White House's response as a potential obstacle to the deepening alignment between the world's two largest democracies, India and the United States? I think that the two sides are capable 
of clever diplomacy uh, where they can arrange uh, a quiet settlement where somebody goes on trial in the United States, uh, the India isn't forced to admit culpability in public, privately admits, oops, this got a little out of hand. It was a rogue operation. We'll call it a rogue operation. Uh, this person wasn't uh, authorized. Of course, deniability would have been built in at an early stage, would it not? I mean, I don't think that modern states uh, go around committing murders, you know, wearing an Indian uniform. I, I don't think so. I, 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 I think that they are a bit more clever than that. So that will, will work. Uh, but next time the word is out that we're watching you and it's not okay when you do it, it's only okay when we do it. And that's the hypocrisy, which which is India's comeback. If India is fears being humiliated or looked down upon for, uh, uh, let's say, going too far, throwing its weight around, acting thuggishly, uh, or at least in an unseemly and undiplomatic manner in other people's territory, well, they've got a reply, haven't they? I think the Indians would, 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 would be very likely to point out that, you know, uh, here's the list, by the way, of all the people that you assassinated uh, proudly and publicly and announced it. You're proud of it. So, uh, you know, how come when we do it, uh, suddenly it's a terrible crime and, oh, dear, it's a, it's a great powers shouldn't do this kind of thing. Fair enough. Many thanks to you, Terry Malewski, for joining in on World 360. Now, days after being sacked, Sam Altman has returned as OpenAI CEO. Watch the big scoop, but after a quick break.